update. Am I the a-hole for tricking my ex into admitting to her affair? Original post. Pretty much the title. I felt like something was off, so I went through her phone and found messages between her and a male friend that seemed suspect. Discussing meeting up when she'd never mentioned it to me, flirting, talking in coded language about sex, etc. There was nothing overt, but still pretty sketchy. I figured she'd just lie and bury things deeper if I confronted her, and she was actually cheating. So I set up a fake Instagram account and sent her a message saying I knew she was cheating with her friend, had her receipts, and was going to contact her partner in three days whether or not she confessed. The next day, she sat me down and admitted to cheating, but wouldn't tell me who it was or how long it had been going on. She was sorry. She loved me and wanted to make things work. It meant nothing, blah blah blah. I told her that I already knew and that it was me who had sent her the message. My ex lost it, and I had to leave the apartment and go stay with a friend to get away from her. She was gone, along with most of her clothes when I came back the next day. She'd completely trashed the place while I was gone. This all happened a few weeks ago, and it has been pretty tough ever since. It sucked having to find a new place to live, and separating our stuff while dealing with feeling like crap. To make it worse, I'd met the guy several times, shaken his hand, bought him a drink, thought he was harmless, etc. Mostly, I feel like an idiot for having trusted her. I've never cheated on anyone, and I assumed my ex was cut out of the same cloth. My ex is adamant that I am an a-hole for what I did to her, but I don't really feel like I owe her anything. I don't know, am I the a-hole here? Now for the top comments before reading the update. I don't know about being an a-hole, but you're an idiot for still staying in touch with your ex and giving her opinion of you any consideration. I know idiot is harsh, and I don't actually mean it in a nasty way, but more for hyperbole to drive home the point. We'd been together for four years and had joint bank accounts, a cat, a car, furniture, etc. It's not easy to entangle all of that unless you're willing to talk. Is the kitty okay? My furry little dude is safe and sound with me. My ex is adamant that I am an a-hole for what I did to her, but I don't really feel like I owe her anything. For what you did to her? Wow, she's desperately trying to find an offensive position, when in reality she's victim blaming. I applaud you for what you did, which was to catch her cheating and call her out. Guess the other dude can continue making his deposits because she's morally bankrupt. You should send him a celebratory bottle of wine as a gift for getting her out of your life. Does the other guy know she's a cheater? If not, there's a future r slash petty revenge story here. Not a hole. Yeah, he knew about me, but met on several occasions and had been introduced to me as a friend. He's just as gross and morally bankrupt as her. They deserve each other. I don't really feel like I need or want any revenge. I just want her out of my life. Not a hole. This is just another example of the twisted logic that horrible people often use. She is angry because she wanted to dictate when and if the relationship came to an end. She also felt that it was her right to hide her transgressions. You took away her fundamental right of lying to her partner. I agree. It's wild how she thinks she gets to control the narrative while betraying your trust. She wanted to keep her secret safe and expected you to just accept her lies. You exposed the truth, and that's not your fault. She is mad because she got caught, not because you did anything wrong, OB. Not the a-hole. Now for the first update. So I think my original post must have been shared on Facebook or something because my phone has been blowing up. It's mostly mutual friends and acquaintances asking if I posted it. I told a few people about how it caught her cheating, and I guess it wasn't hard to put two and two together. My ex also tried to call me about a hundred times. I know she knows my throwaway username because she sent me a screenshot of the post along with a long abusive message threatening all sorts of things. I blocked her everywhere after that. I want to clear a few things up. Going through her phone was wrong. I get that. To be honest, it's the first time I've ever done anything like that in a relationship, and it was only because there were so many things that gave me bad vibes. Example, late nights out with vague explanations, being caught in various lies, sleeping with her phone under her pillow or leaving it face down on a charger, etc. 
I left the apartment because my ex has a history of violent histrionics when she doesn't get her way. I didn't want to put myself in a compromising situation where she could either hurt me or make up stories about me hurting her. I had a bug out bag packed and ready to go before I hit send on a message just in case. She didn't do any real damage to the apartment, just threw my stuff around while having a tantrum. It took a few hours to clear up, and nothing valuable was damaged, so I figured it was easier to just let it slide. I had to stay in contact with her while we divided up our joint finances. Furniture and various other stuff accumulated over a four-year relationship. As of yesterday, that's all done, which is why I waited several weeks to make the initial post. She's now blocked everywhere. Yes, I took the cat with me. We've both been crashing at my friend's place while I look for a new apartment. He's doing great. He was always my pet anyway. My ex tolerated him at best. I told my ex that I was the one who sent the message because I wanted her to know. I suppose I could have played that hand differently, but I wanted the satisfaction of seeing the look on her face when she found out. It didn't feel that great in hindsight. I'd probably go back and do that differently if I could. I wasn't planning on airing her dirty laundry in social media, does Reddit count? Because I wanted to be above that sort of juvenile BS. But it seems like the horse has bolted on that now. People know. I don't think there'll be much else to update on after this. I don't intend to ever speak to her again. I doubt her ugly little man has the backbone to come after me. Jane, I know you're reading this. I hope you also read all the comments in the first post. They were savage. You're disgusting. And I am so glad I was able to see your true colors before I wasted any more of my life on you. Good luck with the pathetic goblin you chose over me. I don't know if I should feel more sorry for him or for you. In any case, people of your quality deserve to be together. Oh, and a-hole? She's all yours now, buddy. Good luck with that. Good for you. Continue to move forward and don't let anyone make you doubt yourself for a second that fooling that violent cheater into showing her true face was wrong. Agreed, you did the right thing. It's good that she showed her true colors. Keep moving forward and don't let her negativity bring you down. Going through her phone was wrong, I get that. It's not when you are given a reason. When you can share a toilet seat, you can look at each other's phones. Even more when you share a bed. Even more when she shares a bed with someone else. Now for the second update. Where to begin? Some things have happened since my last update. Yesterday while I was out, my ex-girlfriend Jane showed up at my buddy's place with a box of my stuff and asked to see me. He said she looked awful. He also said she had a fat lip. I have to admit that I almost caved and called her to see if she was okay. I'm glad I didn't. My ex's sister Hannah texted and asked if we could talk. We always got along and I have no issues with Jane's family, so I called her after I got home. We talked for about an hour. She wanted to apologize for her sister's behavior, but she also told me about some of the things that have been happening over the last few weeks. Jane has been staying with her sister since we split, and A-hole, the guy she was cheating with, has been coming around regularly. They got into a huge fight yesterday, and Jane lost it at A-hole. Her sister had to pull her off him, and A-hole's elbow connected with my ex's face while he was trying to get away from her. Turns out he's not single, and his girlfriend found out about Jane. It also turns out that my ex wasn't his only side piece. After Hannah kicked him out, my ex-girlfriend spilled her guts. She's been lying to her family about everything. She told them that I cheated and she broke up with me. Hannah said that my ex had confided in a couple of her friends about the way she got caught out. One of them saw the original AITA post and sent it to her since the details lined up almost exactly. Her friend must have shared a post with other people too, and from there it kind of snowballed. Hannah said that she's given my ex a week to find somewhere else to stay. So that's it, I guess. It seems like the truth has finally come to light and you're better off staying away from the drama and focusing on moving forward. Now we can sit back, pop some popcorn, and watch the drama unfold. This is better than Netflix. Yes, sounds like Kopi's ex is karma's new bestie. Don't you just love karma? And keep strong and stay the course, and don't let her even try to ask you for a second chance. I'm pretty sure that's why she showed up at my friend's place. 
All of her options fell through, so she was hoping to manipulate me into fixing things for her. I'd rather pleasure myself with a cheese grater than get back together with her. If you and Jane share any mutual friends, do not go to any parties, in case it's a setup for you both to work it out. In case your ex knows people from your workplace or has access to your work email, give your boss the heads up. Congratulations, Opie, on being free of this clown show. Sorry for your loss, but at the end of the day, doesn't sound like much of a loss. I see this as an absolute win. Last story. My best friend is dating my abuser and wants me to reconcile with him, so I kicked her out of my home. I've tried to write this out for days now, but I keep getting too upset to concentrate, so this might be a bit jumpy. I don't have family in the sense many understand family to be. So, I've been pretty much a loner with one exception, my best friend Tammy. We met in middle school and just became joined at the hip. Things changed a bit in college. My parents forced me into a Christian out-of-state college. Tammy applied and got accepted to the other college in the town, so we both went out there and were roommates for two of the years, before I met my first ever boyfriend. I will call him Trent. I moved in with him the end of junior year, and I don't know when it started happening, but he went from charming and affectionate to controlling. I don't wish to upset anyone, so I will hit the pause button and warn you that below is some of the things he did for me to label him abusive. He would put me down, and hint he could find someone better, or that if he cheats, it will be my fault since I wasn't this or that enough. It started to get physical senior year. At first, it was him pushing me out of the wave he was walking by, and I was at a path for whatever reason. Then, he would slap me in arguments, calling me worthless, a waste of his time in young years, a broken toy no one will love. I didn't have any real self-esteem, so I stayed, thinking I was the problem, and when I called home about it, I was told that the problem was me. I started to make my exit plan the day after I graduated. He had proposed, and I hesitated, and he screamed at me to ask why. Then he swung and punched the wall right next to my head. I fell to the floor in fear, and he tried to comfort me and basically forced me into sex. When I woke up the next morning, the ring was on my finger, and he forced me again and later called it makeup sex, saying he forgave me for the way I treated him. That is the extremely short explanation, but there are so many stories of him forcing me into bed, hitting me, and threatening to end me and more. So, I started to make a plan. I found a shelter in the city nearby. I started hiding things in the trunk of my car. I was in the service industry then and so I would take more shifts whenever I could and hide my cash tips in a box of tampons in my purse. And I finally was ready and left him, left my phone, I had a new cheap one, and never went back. Tammy knew him and lived near us, but she didn't know about my plan. She messaged me on social media and I told her what happened. All of what happened. So, she played dumb when he came around asking where I was, spinning the story that I was self-harming, and he is calling the police to find me. He never found me. That was years ago. I am now 36 and Tammy's too. Trent is 38. Tammy became a bit religious, but I told her as long as she is happy and safe, I don't care what she leans on in faith. She started to invite me out to her church four years ago, and I kept saying no, until I very firmly said if she brought it up again, I would just walk out or hang up. I'm not against anyone believing what they want, I just don't want her need to be sucked into it. I honestly do not mean any offense to anyone of any faith, I myself am just agnostic, and if that ever will change, I will decide on my own, but I doubt it will. She got a job two years ago overseas. I acted excited for her, and I was. But I was also deeply devastated. Without her, I had no one else. By this time, I wasn't in contact with much of my family. And I do have surface-level friends, but no one that's known me in a real sense. I worked it out with my counselor and just carried on. We stayed in touch online and video chatted a lot. She would show me London, and I would show her my transition to moving to Texas. We would chronicle our explorations of our new cities. And then one day, it started to slow down on her end right around the time she went to visit a friend in our old college town. She then asked if she flew to Texas sometime this summer, could she stay with me a few days, and I excitedly agreed. So early this month, just a few weeks ago, she came here. She was off the whole first day, but I figured she was tired. Then the next day, we went out and got drunk. 
She started to cry and I got us an Uber back to my place and I asked her what was wrong. That's when she asked me not to hate her and told me everything. She's with Trent. She's been with him almost a year. I was too stunned to even say anything and she went on and on about how it's not what I think and he has changed. She told me he found Jesus and turned his life around and deeply regrets the way he treated me. The more she talked, the more I just shut off. I didn't even have it in me to feel anger. I just stared at her, frozen as she talked, until she said, please just say something. So I did. I told her to get the heck out. She started to explain it all again, that she hated him forever, but they kept running into each other. He goes to church and he showed he has changed, bloody bloody blah. I didn't interrupt her, but when she stopped talking again, I just repeated myself. She argued more, and I would just listen and repeat until she grabbed her stuff and left. It was silent between us for a week, until my dad texted me that Tammy called my parents crying and told me to get over myself. After all, it's not like I wanted to get back with him, right? And that's what I get for living with a man I wasn't married to. Then she texted the next week rehashing her argument and pretty much demanding I video chat with him to see for myself that he's changed and forgive him. She then blamed me that they can't take the next steps in their relationship because I don't have a forgiving heart and that I was malicious when I kicked her out. I've spent all of this week trying to figure out if I am insane to think this is a huge betrayal. A deal breaker. I mean, who even dates their friend's ex? For one. But this? I blocked her after she hinted that my version of things was exaggerated and malicious. But I don't have other friends to turn to about this. I don't think I am, but my and her family thinks I am the a-hole. At least for kicking her out in a strange city alone when she was just being honest with me. Am I? Now for the comments. Your so-called best friend is playing you for a fool, and you gotta call it like it is. A hot mess wrapped in betrayal. Dating your abuser? Girl, that's not just crossing a line, it's leaping over it with no look back. Kicking her out wasn't just right, it was necessary. You don't need that kind of disrespect and trauma reopening nonsense in your life. And her trying to preach about forgiveness? That's her trying to wash her own guilt away, not about helping you heal. Listen here, don't you dare feel bad for putting yourself first. You ain't no rehabilitation center for poorly raised folks pretending to be friends. Cut her off. Cut that nonsense off. And don't you look back. You're not the crazy one here. She and anyone who's siding with her are. You keep that head high and that door shut to toxic messes like that. Cut her off and cut your damn family off, Hopi. They're siding with your abuser instead of their own damn daughter. They're not a family to you. You are worse with them in your life. You will make new friends. These people are all toxic and are just going to keep hurting you. Rip off the band-aid. Get rid of all of them. Who here can see that the abuser went after the ex-friend to stay close to Opie? It's so freaking obvious. And that their relationship can't move forward until it gets FaceTime with her? Yeah, that is manipulative AF.